Elon Musk just confirmed his bold plan with Starship Super Heavy once again. But unlike before, this goal is now closer than ever. The Super Heavy booster can be used more frequently than the ship as it returns in about six minutes and can theoretically be ready for flight in an hour, Musk said in a tweet recently. An hour? At first blush, this sounds totally insane, right? How does one catch a falling rocket with a launch tower? We can arrive at an answer by exploring how SpaceX's Mechazilla operates today. Clearly, SpaceX has adeptly utilized Starbase's Mechazilla tower and arms to swiftly stack a Starship upper stage atop a super heavy booster with remarkable skill and speed. SpaceX has stacked Ship 25 and Booster 9 a total of six times, matching the combined stackings of Ship 20 and B4 and Ship 24 and B7. Beyond the frequency, the stacking process itself has notably improved. Gone are the days of waiting nearly two hours to witness the assembly of a 120 meter high starship. SpaceX now accomplishes this in just a third of the time. Showcasing remarkable efficiency. Witness the impressive alignment process in this time-lapse video, capturing every crucial step in stacking Starship 25 and Booster 9. The precision with which the crane and connectors maneuver it in small increments is incredible. These advancements solidify the feasibility of the Starbase launch tower concept. The tale continues, focusing on the saga of this colossal chopstick capturing its fly. Standing at a towering 145 meters, the core structure of the launch and landing tower is crafted from robust steel. Among its features are three mechanical arms, one of which functions as a rapid disconnect arm, serving as a propellant umbilical connection and a mid-rocket stabilizer. The other two arms work in tandem, joining forces to install snare incoming spaceships. These colossal chopsticks, measuring 36 meters in length, are tubular steel beams. Mechanically, the arms move up and down on a rail track using a robust winch system akin to an oil rig's mechanism for lowering and retracting drills from the ocean floor. The draw cables, powered by four massive electric motors at the tower's base, generate a combined 6,000 horsepower. The hydraulic cylinders control the chopsticks' pinching motion. Concerning the coordination between the booster and chopsticks, the final landing burn initiates at an altitude of approximately 1,800 meters, mirroring the starting point for Falcon 9. Speaking of, similar to Falcon 9, Super Heavy descends at an angle, maximizing surface area for atmospheric interaction, creating drag or lift. Grid fins aid in stabilizing the flight. Diverging from Falcon, Super Heavy deploys nine engines during the landing burn attached to a motorized gimbal system for steering. At 800 meters, six engines shut down, leaving three Raptors to straighten and control the rocket's hover. As the tower arms shift away from the launch mount at about 65 meters above ground, two engines cease, with one last shutting down right as the chopsticks reach for two pins under the grid fins. Super Heavy will be decelerating rather slowly and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. That slow, cautious descent and even slower touchdown may be necessary necessary because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be in order to land on a pair of hard points with inches of lateral margin for error and maybe a few square feet of usable surface area. The challenge is a bit like if SpaceX, for some reason, made Falcon boosters land on two elevated ledges about as wide as car tires. Aside from demanding accurate rotational control, even the slightest lateral deviation would cause the booster to topple off the pillars, and in the case of Super Heavy, fall about a hundred feet onto concrete where it would obviously explode. After all that, if it can be immediately lowered onto the launch mount after a landing, the booster can be secured, detanked, inspected, refueled, and launched again in an hour, as Musk declared. Notably, the detanking process is especially important for Starship since it will still contain excess methane after it lands. Methane isn't allowed to be vented into the atmosphere, so SpaceX plans to pump the leftovers back into the tank farm for it to be recondensed and used for the next flight. It is unclear whether this is even possible, but in theory, a super heavy booster could descend under the power of a subset of its 33 engines, come very nearly to a hover, and arms from the launch tower could extend to grab the booster. This does sound like a rather crazy maneuver, but a few years ago, so did dispatching an autonomous drone ship into the Atlantic Ocean to catch falling rockets. 
This is one of the keys to success for Musk and his leadership style. He asks his employees to do nearly impossible things, such as building a fully reusable orbital launch system, and then he gives them the freedom to experiment and sometimes to fail. The idea sounds like it just might be crazy enough to work. We hope that the first attempt can take place this year of 2024. If it manages to get free of regular FAA investigations, 2024 will be a big year for Starship. There are several parts of the Starship slash human landing system that still need testing. First up is building even more reliability into the system to ensure its safety for the crew to fly on it. Second, and most importantly, SpaceX needs to develop and demonstrate the technology for in-space refueling. This includes the transfer of cryogenic propellants between spacecraft as many as 15 times, something that has never been done before. SpaceX plans to demonstrate a basic version of this technology by transferring some propellant into Starship's header tanks as soon as Flight 3. While small, it is still a big step in getting Starship ready to support Artemis. Anticipation is high for a multitude of groundbreaking Starship test flights in the year of 2024, laying the foundation for unprecedented achievements in space exploration. Setting Starship aside momentarily, following a groundbreaking 2023, SpaceX is gearing up to commence the new year with the launch of a brand new Falcon 9 booster from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, slated for early evening hours today. Dubbed B-1082, this core marks the addition of the 15th Falcon 9 core in active operational service. SpaceX is reportedly aiming for as many as 144 launches, an average of 12 per month, before the end of 2024, an ambitious prospect. Even at its current cadence, the Hawthorne, California headquartered organization has managed nine launches per consecutive month since August of 2023. If that flight rate continues at its present pace with no uplift, 2024 should at least hit 118 missions by next New Year's Eve. Should today's four-hour window be missed, another group of T-0 opportunities will open at 5.51 p.m. Pacific Wednesday. Aboard B-1082 for the mission are 21 Starlings, tipping the scales at 16,800 kilograms, which will be released into space about 62 minutes after liftoff. Although SpaceX reveals precious little detail of a forthcoming manifest, no earlier than dates for two more January missions are definitely known. Twice flown Dragon Freedom will launch from historic Pad 39A at Florida's Kennedy Space Center no earlier than 5.06 p.m. Eastern on the 17th for Axiom Space Incorporated's all private Ax-3 crew carrying mission to the International Space Station, followed by Northrop Grumman Corporation's NG-20 Sickness cargo ship named in honor of NASA astronaut and physicist Dr. Patty Hilliard Robertson from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Base on the 29th. Also baselined for early January is Sweden's 1500 kilogram Avzon 3 high throughput broadband communications satellite destined for insertion into geostationary orbit at a mean altitude of 35,900 kilometers. And judging from Starlink's impressive cadence over the last half year, averaging six to eight launches per month of these flat packed internet communications satellites between July and December, it can be expected that a busy January indeed lies ahead. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, wishing you a wonderful new year and reminding you to always keep looking up.